nothing in there. Sound <laughs> magic words. A la chicken noodle soup. <sighs> hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying to practice my magic tricks, but I think that I'm missing something. I think I'm missing some, like, help. Do you right. think you could help me? Yeah, I'd love to. What do you want me to do? Uh, can you please hold this very empty box? Nothing in there. Right. Okay, hold it. Yeah. I'll say the magic words. A la chicken noodle soup. Go. Oh, I think there's something in there. Hang on. Oh, oh hang on. Oh, it's a bit feisty. Hang on. What's going on? Oh, oh, ha, ha, magic. Ha, Welcome to J-Rev. Well, hey, J-Rev. Welcome back. It's really good to have you here. Um, what's happening here? Well, um, see, this is why I just magicked out of thin air and, uh, we got off to a bit of a bumpy start, but we've come to an agreement that uh, if he doesn't eat me, then I will give him all the chicken nuggets that he, Ooh, he desires. Oh, how many chicken nuggets? Uh, seven. Seven? Seven. That's an awkward number of chicken nuggets. Do it you is. buy two, a six pack and a three pack, or do you buy a 10 pack or a 20 pack? I think it's more economical to buy the 10 pack, eat three, and give them the seven. Got it. Yeah. Does that sound good? Okay, excellent. Um. Sarah, mm. I'm going to do another magic trick without him knowing, just so I don't have to owe him any chicken nuggets. So, I'm just going to do that again. Ah, uh, uh, chicken noodles! Ha ha ha! Hello! That was amazing. That's pretty cool. Oh, Sarah, he says that I need to give him 17 chicken nuggets. Oh, I better go and get that sorted out before you he leaves me. Okay, alright, I'm going to go this way. Hey J-Rev, today you might notice something a little bit different. I'm wearing a glove, and that's just to help my hand because I've got eczema, but I'm still going to draw and have fun. All right, let's go. So, we've got some lined paper here, and I'm going to make it into a grid by using another piece of lined paper just to mark out all the spacings. So I'm going to do that on one side, flip it over, do it on the other as well. Next, I'm going to take a ruler and a pen, and I'm going to draw straight lines between those markings I just made. And this is going to make up a grid that we're going to use as a template to make pixel art. Now pixels are used to make up pictures on a screen and back in the old days, particularly when video games were brand new, um, they used a thing called pixels to make up their characters and, and environments and you could kind of see the blocky kind of square look. And so people use pixel art these days if they want to do something a little bit retro, a little bit kind of funky. So we're going to be doing that today. So I've got a blank piece of paper here that I'm going to overlay over the top of the grid and you'll be able to see the grid just underneath it if you look really closely. If you have trouble at home you can also hold it up against a window. The sun will shine through and you'll be able to see the grid underneath. Now get some textures. We're going to be writing some pixel letters. We're going to be drawing pixel letters and so the way that you do that is join a series of smaller and larger groups of pixels together to make letters. Now a letter like H or uh, I are quite easy but R and S in my name are a little bit curvy and so you have to combine kind of a staggered approach of shapes together. You can see here that I'm using one or two squares, maybe three squares. With a little bit of practice, you'll work out how to draw curved shapes with pixels too. And then I'm gonna color this in, just using the black texture, and this will be the base for my pixel art. All right, now to decorate it a little bit. So I'm going to be drawing some shadows underneath these letters to make them look like they're popping up off the page. And all you have to do is imagine what pixels would go where if you were to drag a copy of the, those pixels down one space. And this is different to making an outline around the entirety of the letters. You're kind of just trying to think, where would the shadows fall if I had a light pointing from up above? And this is kind of the result. So we've got one more colour here and then we're going to move on to decorating around it. Alright, 
So now I'm going to be doing some Tetris themed pieces because they're made up of pixels and they're really easy shapes to do. So I'm just going to use a bunch of different coloured textures and I'm going to draw some different uh, pieces that you would see in the game Tetris. Have you ever played Tetris before? The aim of the game is that you have to move all of these uh, fun coloured shapes down a playing field and you have to make straight lines and the lines disappear when you complete them and you get points for them and you have to try and do that for as long as possible and get the highest score. It's a really fun game. I used to play it a lot when I was younger. You might have played it before. So maybe you'll be able to do this with your name. If you have a long name, you might need a longer piece of paper or smaller pixels because it kind of dictates how big uh, your artwork is going to be based on how big the squares are. A few more shapes, just filling in the space nicely. And there you go, I'm going to put that on my door. I give up. I give up. What I do you mean? Being a professional magician at the top of my game is mm. just way too difficult. It's just too much responsibility. I'm just going to wipe my hands of it. Mm. Oh, no, I didn't want to do that. I'm just so frustrated. Whoa. Slime? I think your magic oh, is broken. a spider! I think my magic is broken. You know what? Um, I think I'm just going to have to just to stop doing anything that could bring magic tricks to life, okay? Then I'm just gonna have to drop it all. Ah! <laughs> ah! Magic chatter teeth! I suppose that's better than a spider and goo. Yeah. yeah. Hey, j hmm. have you been learning any new magic tricks? Um, maybe they have. Have you been learning a new skill? Maybe. Do you know how to ride a bike? Maybe. Hey, I would love to know if you could do anything like special or fancy and you know how you can show me? How? You can send it into the J-Rab Little Box! Yeah, like what kinds of stuff do they send in? Like, well, do they send in like random pieces of paper or what yeah. are you anticipating? Doing? Well, uh, whether you've been drawing something or crafting something or maybe you've been making a video of like a dance, you know, that you've been learning or maybe you've been learning a language. We'd love to hear that from you. So there's the address just here. So just get a grown up to help you send it in and maybe we can have it on the show. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh
Do you like magic tricks? I bet you're sitting there wondering how I did that. Maybe you think I have super magician powers? Well, I hate to bust your bubble, but actually I just tricked you. You see, I had this matchstick and I blue tacked it to the back of my thumb so that when I flicked my hand, it kind of looked like it had disappeared, right? Okay, so even if I don't have real magical powers, it's pretty cool to think about if we did have real magic powers or just any special powers for that reason at all. Like, imagine if you were kind of like Superman and you could just fly anywhere. Imagine if you were like the Hulk and you were just so strong that you could literally smash anything. Imagine if you were like Elastigirl and when you wanted a snack while you were watching TV, you don't even have to move, you can just elastic to get the popcorn. If you could have any magic power, I wonder what you would choose. So today we're going to talk about powers, not really magic powers, but I do have good news for you. You see, God's Holy Spirit gives us power and God's Spirit is pretty powerful. See, the Bible tells us lots of stories about what God's Holy Spirit can do and what his power can do. If we look in the Gospels, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and also the book of Acts, which is just after that, we read stories where people had God's Holy Spirit power and it was so powerful that it raised people back from the dead and it helped people who were sick to get completely healed. If we go back to the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis, we read about how God's Holy Spirit was there too, and it hovered over the water as the world was being made. Amazing! In the New Testament, uh, different writers tell us lots of other things that God's Holy Spirit power does for us. God's Holy Spirit power is so powerful that it helps us to be able to hear and talk to God. God's Holy Spirit power is so powerful that it helps us receive eternal life from God. God's Holy Spirit power is so powerful that not only does it help us hear God, but understand what he's trying to talk to us about. God's Holy Spirit power is powerful. And my favorite part is it's not just reserved for grown-ups. God's Holy Spirit power is for you guys too as kids. So while God's Holy Spirit power probably won't help us to leap over really tall buildings or turn us into the stretchiest people that have ever lived on the planet. God's Holy Spirit power is so powerful that it helps us become like Jesus, hear from God, and experience huge, crazy signs and wonders. And all of these signs and wonders help other people realize just how powerful God is and experience his love too. So how do we receive God's Holy Spirit power? We talk to God and we ask him for it. So let's do that now. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that your Holy Spirit's power is so powerful that it raised Jesus from the dead. And your Holy Spirit power is so powerful that it helps us to know who you are, Jesus, and to be able to talk to you. So God, we ask you to fill our hearts with the Holy Spirit's power. Amen. Our memory verse is from Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit falls on you. And you will be my witnesses. Let's do it one more time. Acts 1, 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit falls on you. And you will be my witnesses. Hey Jared! Guess what? What? It's time for our weekly challenge! Huh, what is it this week? Well, this week we're gonna do the Holy Spirit top up! Huh? Huh? Well, we've been learning about how the Holy Spirit gives us power Mm. to do things that we might struggle to do on our own. Like leap over tall buildings? Not quite. In a single bound? Mm, It's not quite like that. That would be really cool, but. The Holy Spirit actually helps us to make good choices ah. and helps us to be good friends. Basically so that we become more like Jesus, right? Exactly! Okay. Exactly! The Holy Spirit makes us more like Jesus and that's really cool. But you know what? You can get access to the same Spirit that Jesus had access to and you can get access to that whenever you want. 
What? Yeah, I know. It's crazy, yeah. but it's true. How? Well, all you need to do is ask. How? Here's a good reminder. Every time you fill up your drink bottle this mm. week, you can say, God, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that'll Hang be a good on. reminder. But I thought that the whole Holy Spirit thing was just for grown-ups. No, 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 no. Did you know, j -Rev, that there is no junior version of the Holy Spirit? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so when I say you can have the same power as Jesus, I mean it. You don't have to be a grown-up for that. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I've already filled up my drink bottle, um, but I think I'm going to fill up another ten drink bottles and ask for more and more Holy Spirit power. Yeah, that seems like a sensible thing to do. Do you know where your Holy Spirit drink bottle is? Um, I think I left it at school. Okay, well, you can have this one, and oh. I'll go and fill up another Thanks. one. Thanks. Okay? All right, see you, JRF. Bye. Okay, uh, um, you can have this this one. I'll have this one with the green lid. That way I can remember this one.